Hello, and welcome to today's episode of Between Friends. I'm so excited to tell you that we have a special guest, Christine Connor from Emily Scott Designs. You may know her better with the name Edge to Edge attached to either her company, Emily Scott Designs, or her actual name. We're going to talk all about quilting in an embroidery machine, and I know you probably have a lot of questions for Christine. We've been a big fan of Christine's for many years, and I'm just really excited to welcome her here on the show. But this week, so make sure you're signing in so I know where you're watching from. We're going to bring in Christine in a little bit. She's going to be broadcasting from Ohio. And of course, today I'm in Texas. And it's a beautiful day here today in the 70s, believe it or not, when I came in this morning because we had a storm, you know, breeze through last night and cooled us off. So lovely. Hi, Retha. It's great to have you here. You're back from Wisconsin. Good. Great to have you here. Um, and Terry Freeman from PA. We have Oklahoma in the house. Um, gee, when I hear the name Oklahoma, I think of the terrible tragedy that occurred yesterday in Tulsa, and my heart goes out to all of those folks, um, and of course here in Texas too. Uh, but we're going to concentrate on happy thoughts today, and some of those best happy thoughts are from uh, that I focus on are quilting with my embroidery machine. It is probably one of the um, most um, rewarding the tasks that I do in my sewing room because, you know, it's putting those final touches on a quilt that you have pieced, that you've poured your heart and soul into. And, you know, when, you able, when you're able to completely finish it on your embroidery machine by quilting it, that's pretty special. Really pretty special. Wow, we really have folks from all over today. Cannon City, Colorado. We have uh, Annie from Colorado. Lots of folks up there. And Virginia. I have family in Virginia. Um, so always nice to see people tuning in from all over. Today, not only are we going to meet um, Christine Connor, but we're also going to talk a little bit about hoops. Not a lot because I know you want to get to Christine, but it is Hoopapalooza here in Dime. The whole month of June, we have sales on our um, sticky hoops and monster hoops. So if you've had your eye on a certain size, this would be the time to take advantage of that special pricing. And, you know, most hoops are, well, all hoops are, well, most hoops are over $75. So if you buy, uh, if you spend $75, you get free shipping which is pretty valuable today. You know, that shipping is getting out of control, right? For both a company and, you know, the consumer. So anyway, let's take a look at um, Sticky Hoop, shall we? Why don't we go over and take a look at Sticky Hoop? So Sticky Hoop comes on a board just like this. And on the back will be your hoop. And it has a metal frame. It has the attachment that is recognized by your machine. So you have to buy it specifically for your machine. And it's going to have 25 sheets of stabilizer that has been cut specifically for that hoop. And you will apply that sticky stabilizer to the back of the hoop. And then I store the protective paper back on top of the hoop. And then that way I always have a hoop ready to roll. So what would you use this for? Well, how about, you know, a jewelry case such as this that I'm not going to be able to hoop in any fashion because it's a finished good. It does zip open so I can get that flat. And then when I take this over to the machine, I'm going to use my sticky board hoop to transport it to the machine. That way I don't worry about dislodging the stabilizer, knocking this out of position. I'm going to have everything right where I want it and then I'll just take this right to the machine and then attach it to the machine. It comes in a multiple uh, offering of sizes. One of our, my favorite sizes is the five by seven. And of course the four by four is very popular. And what would you use the four by four? Well, something small, like maybe a, um, a bookmark that you most certainly can't hoop that, but I can just finger press it in place and then add my beautiful embroidery and then just peel it away. Or maybe we would use it on a coaster. 
you know, these are the types of things that are difficult to hoop and sticky stabilizer is easy and that sticky hoop, you know, it's flat. So if you're doing applique or something in that fashion, it's so easy to trim because it's just super flat and you get your hand and your scissors right over to the design area. Well, I'd like to go back over to um, PowerPoint so I can give you a tour. You know, we redesigned our compatibility chart because, you know, you have to buy the hoop that is accommodating, accommodated by your machine. So they come in all different sizes. So when you go to www.dzgns, and of course we're gonna run a, um, you know, the link here, but I just thought I would review it with you. So if at the top of the uh, scroll bar, you can click on hoops and hooping systems and then see that the image that comes up in the right corner where I have that red arrow. If you click on that, that will take you right to the compatibility chart. And we've updated it. You're going to love this. It actually is, you know, about 15 pages. So you won't print it out, but you'll just use it as a reference online. So go to the table of contents, find the page that you're interested in. If you are a uh, Husqvarna Viking user or FAF or Bernina brother, whichever one, and then you'll advance to that page. Here, we're on the baby lock page. Now, as we zoom in and we take a look at that, um, you'll see that the machine names are listed on the left side. The size of the hoop runs across the top. And then in where those two lines meet, if you click on, let's say, LM1 for the Altair, that will actually take you right to the page where you can purchase that specific hoop for your machine. So it's, you know, hot links, it's going, so you don't have to scroll through a lot of pages. I know that was a problem for um, people in the past. So we really made a, put a lot of effort into updating that. And speaking of updating, it's updated all the time. So a couple things to know. If you just got a brand new machine that literally has just been released by one of the sewing machine companies, our um, hoop compatibility chart may not list that machine yet. So it doesn't mean that the hoop doesn't um, you know, work on your machine. What you should use as a, um, as a rule of thumb in the back of your mind is if your machine comes with a specific size hoop, made by your machine manufacturer, and we have the same size hoop on our brand, then it will be compatible. Because, you know, we don't change the machine. We just make the same hoop, you know, the same size hoop with the same attachment. So it's recognized by the machine. And so that's, don't worry if your machine's not listed, if it's a brand new machine. You can always contact our customer service if you have some questions, but. Let's see, uh, Kathy Taylor wants to know, uh, she loves the, the sticky hoops, but she says, what's the best way to clean it? Uh, mineral spirits I have found is the best way to remove that. I kind of scrape it off with a plastic scraper. Think of a, you know, a stiff spatula, right? But just a hand piece of uh, plastic. And then I use uh, mineral spirits to wipe off the residue. Does the backing dissolve with water? water? No, it does not dissolve with water, so. Okay. Aloha, Judy Warren. It's all right if you're late. We're so happy you're here. Never worry about that. Let's see. And Joanne Banco says, do you all know Joanne of Let's Go Sew? She says she's a big fan of the dime sticky hoop. It's perfect for hooping garments with buttons, snaps, or embellishments that get in the way. And she should know because she has an embroidery collection out called Just Jackets that mainly focused on embellishing jean jackets. And boy, do they have a lot of rivets and buttons and some have snaps, so she knows, right? Okay, so let's head back over to the camera and uh, I'm gonna move the sticky hoop out of the way and then we'll bring up Monster Hoop. So Monster Hoop, as you know, same as a sticky hoop, you have to purchase it for your machine 
so that the attachment will be read by your machine. So that's all that's important. You find your machine model on the hoop compatibility chart, locate the size that you desire, and then click on that link. It'll take you over there. In the box, you're going to have your magnetic top, your shield, and of course your flat bottom. And I'll just flip that over so you can see. So our metal bottoms for Snap Hoop Monster have protective suede on the wrong side. Mine is gray, but yours may be green, like a kind of a mint green. And you will have a cellophane uh, package in here that has instructions for using the hoop, it has a sheet of target stickers, and there's your rulers, your, well, your placement guides that you will attach to the sides of the hoop. And instructions on how to do that are inside. So don't throw this away, open it up. You're gonna wanna use those items. All right, so let's take a look at maybe hooping something really basic like a towel. And you would have thought I would have had a piece of stabilizer already prepared, but I didn't. So we'll just hoop without stabilizer. How about that? Okay, but I'm just going to mimic. I'm going to take a piece of protective paper, and I just want to show you, when you're using a tearaway, you place the tearaway against the edge of the attachment. There's no reason for the tearaway to extend over the attachment. Just place it there, and of course, it would be bigger than your hoop. This is a piece of paper. This is not stabilizer, so I apologize for not being prepared with that piece of stabilizer. But you would cover the base of the hoop with your stabilizer, and then you're going to take your towel, and you would have a target sticker on that or a template, and you just position it over the bottom frame and then I take my top frame and I stand it up perpendicular to the bottom. I can feel the attachment right here. And in fact, this is, you know, leaning against it. I kind of take my thumb and just feel that I'm somewhat aligned vertically, you know, at the top corner. Then I smooth my fabric, keep my hand out of the way and drop it. And then I smooth that fabric, I can tug it, I can realign it if I want to, but if I am hooped nice and strong like that, um, then I'm confident that I can, you know, have success when I embroider. When I'm moving to the machine, I'm going to take my hoop shield and I'm gonna place it underneath the hoop and transport my hoop with that hoop shield underneath. Now, normally that hoop shield is stored between the top frame and the bottom frame. And that's because it makes it easier to separate the top from the bottom. These are very strong hoops. So you wanna make sure that you always have something between the magnetic frame and the bottom frame. And that's the function of the uh, magnetic shield. And you know, it has a, an opening here that you can use to store, hang this on a um, pegboard or some kind of hook in your studio. That's what I do. But I always make sure that that plastic shield is in between. Now, what if, and this happens all the time to me too, what if they are snapped together without any fabric? Well, the best way to separate them is to slide them not try to lift it, but to slide it apart like that. And if it's connected, you know, all the way around, just take your time and slide it apart, okay? I'm not gonna do that on camera. Sorry. <laughs> okay, Paula Peterson wants to know, what's the most popular size? Well, I will tell you that the most popular size is the five by seven. For, for, for embroiderers who are using the hoop to stitch terry cloth towels, t-shirts, embroidery designs on sweatshirts. But if you're quilting, the bigger, the better. And we'll move to quilting in a moment. But let's take a look at a t-shirt. I already have my, uh, my template in place. And I have fused, um, no-show uh, no fusible, cutaway stabilizer to the wrong side. And I'm just going to open up my shirt. And first I'll remove that top frame. 
and separate. And I can even, you know, just place this underneath for now. Maybe see how that works out. And actually, I'm going to insert that metal bottom frame into the garment. I'm going to place it right inside. And I'm just kind of making sure everything's nice and smooth in there. I can feel my frame. I can feel the frame. And so, again, I'm going to use that same technique of having the uh, top frame perpendicular. Here's my attachment. And then I'll drop it down. And because I have stabilizer on my garment, I can pull this fabric and I don't have to worry about any fabric distortion because it's stabilized with a fusible cutaway and that knit fabric will not stretch or be distorted during the embroidery process. So then I just take my garment and I'm going to turn that right side, uh, well, wrong side out. I pull the sleeves out, really important to make sure you pull those sleeves out. And then I am ready to take this over to the machine and attach it to the machine. I'm going to use that magnet shield underneath so that everything stays in place until I get to the machine. And then I'll flatten this out and just have that design area um, opened. Okay. So, but you asked, what is the most popular size? Well, the five by seven is probably a lot of people's go-to hoop, but I can tell you if you are quilting, then you probably want to go big. And we make some very big hoops. This hoop here is the nine and a half by 14 for baby lock brother. We make a 10 and a half by 16. That's actually over on the machine right now. So why don't we go ahead and take a look at that so you can see how that's in action. I have my weightless quilter all set up. And so that's the 10 by 16. That's going to do a very large design. Uh, and I'll be able to quilt that quilt in less hoopings than I would, you know, if I use, let's say, a 5 by 7 or an 8 by 12. But, you know, you're going to be limited by your machine. So whatever size machine... Um, the, the the largest hoop that your machine allows, then that would be the, the hoop that you should purchase if you plan on quilting with your embroidery machine. So, yes, isn't that fun? Okay, so I see we have some questions. Um, TJ Tech, you want to know where we are going to be expanding our hoops to include the Burnett? We are working on that. So, you know, good news coming on that eventually. Not right yet, though. You know, things take a long time, long, long time. Let's see, um, um, Judith Lynn Whitlock, she's, you know, y'all know this song? I love big and I cannot lie, like that. Love snap hoop monsters, me too, me too. Uh, would this be a good time to use the gadget to ho hold fabric back? Dory, absolutely, and I do have that on the machine. You, you know, we are at a tough angle, but here I'll walk over and point it out. But right here is my hoop guard, and that is a barrier that just snaps underneath the top frame and it creates a barrier so that the quilt roll won't fall into the, this design sewing field. So I use it all the time. I just have it attached to my hoop and I don't even think about it. It's just there. Yep. And how does the weightless quilter work? Well, weightless quilter is doing its job right there. As you can see, see how it's wiggling and moving as that quilt sways with the pantograph. So um, it's wonderful. It's, I just love the weightless quarter. Okay, so Linda, you said, Bernina's jumbo hoop is oval, so you're limited to the size of the oval. That is true. Even though our Bernina jumbo hoops, the very largest ones we make, are rectangular, our monster Bernina large hoops are rectangular. They, their sewing field is oval. We can't change the machine. That's, you know, Bernina dictates what that sewing field is. So, but it does make it easier to hoop in a rectangular hoop. So let's see. Do you, oh, Diane Mills wants to know, do you bind your quilts before quilting it? No, I don't. I, I'm cheating here. I'm, and I'm actually not quilting. I don't even have any thread or needle in the machine. I'm just showing you the process. I've turned the sensors off on my machine, so it will just continue to stitch even though there's no needle or no thread. So 
I do quilt in the normal sequence, you know, piece your quilt, layer it into a quilt sandwich, quilt, take it off the machine, trim the edges and then bind. So good catch. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's see, is there something I can use? Um, is there something I can do to make sure the magnet hoop is easier to slide on the machine? Well, I maybe just rub a, a bar of soap across it, across the attachment. That's not going to harm your machine or anything. So it just sounds like maybe your plastic attachment has gotten a little sticky or something. But because that, you know, let me tell you, tight is good because loose, not so good. Hey, but I want to share one, one more thing on the overhead because we are so excited to welcome the author of Edge to Edge Embroidery and custom quilting on your embroidery machine, and her very latest book, Edge to Edge Pro, Christine Connor from Amelie Scott Design. So let's welcome in Christine Connor. Hi, Hi everybody. <laughs> welcome to my studio, B, and B I is for basement. It's wonderful to have you here. It's just Thank great. You. Yeah. You have done so much with, well, you invented the term edge to edge quilting. And then really the industry kind of took that by, you know, by storm, right? Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, when I started the edge to edge method, nobody was doing this. Um, yeah. I, everybody thought my quilts were being quilted by a, a long arm. Yeah. So why don't you tell us a little bit about how you got started, Christine? Because I'm sure many of our viewers don't, don't know. Well, I was working in a quilt shop for about nine years, and one of the things we were uh, were asked to do in the quilt shop, we weren't required, but we were asked, and it was a, my favorite part of working in a quilt shop, was to make samples out of all the brand new fabric that came in. And so, um, but the store owner uh, wanted all the uh, samples to be quilted. And the only way we quilted things back then was either free motion, which would just you know, was hard on your shoulders, or you'd take it, uh, you'd quilt by check. You would take it to the, uh, your long arm lady and write her a check and let her do it. And so, um, I just started, you know, thinking about it and I thought, you know, I bet I could do this because I was digitizing at the time. And, um, I had two kids that were about to go into college. I had a 17 year old SUV with no heat. And so I figured out a method and started doing that for my samples. And and then I got busted because people were wanting to know what my the designs were that uh, called so that they could have my quilt lady do that on theirs. And I had to fess up and say, no, I'm doing this on my embroidery machine. And then I decided, well, we should probably write a book on this. So that's how it all got started. That's all out of necessity. Good. Yeah, that is wonderful. And what year was that? Uh, well, uh, the book, first book came out 2014, but this was probably, I had the method down probably about 2012. Okay. Yeah. That's quite a long quite time. A long back. And a lot has changed. And I, I have to say magnetic hoops are the way to go, ladies. That's the way to quilt. It's so, thank you. I want to just thank you. Thank you for inventing that because it does make it, it makes it go quicker. It's easier. And I think that's why I'm always, you know, telling everybody about your hoops because I want this process to be easy for them and the hoops right. just make it really easy. So it really does. I remember in your first book, you know, edge to edge, you, you explain how you can, you know, at, you, at the time you use a standard hoop and you take the, mm -hmm. the entire quilt off the machine over to a hooping area, re -ho advance the fabric, rehoop back to the machine. And so um, that's and, pray the, and pray the quilt doesn't come out of the hoop on the process from walking from right. the table back to your right. machine. <laughs> yes. And so I remember walking into your booth at Quilt Market and saying, you know, you really should try my, my hoops. Yeah. And, you know, like all of us, we're always a little skeptical about somebody who wants to change our process because, you know, we worked really hard to come up with our process and it's working for you. But, you know, I, I was so thrilled when you did give it a try and then you were like, yes, this is so much yes. easier. right? Yes. And, and the weightless quilter is a big help, too. I, I oh, like the that. Weightless quilter is awesome. Yeah, it's like having extra friends help you hold the quilt. Yeah. 
That's right. Okay, so we got to, we're going to do a lot of stuff. We're going to tour through your new book, but we're kind of going, going to start with 20 questions. So, Ooh, okay. Yeah, why don't we do some of that? Okay. Okay. Shoot. Yeah. So, and here, I'm going to let Judy Warren, she's going to start it off. And she says, Why did you call it Amelie? Amelie. Okay. Amelie. So, um, uh, all right. So, this is kind of a, a, a story. Okay. So, first of all, I wanted to call my company Christie's Creations. But when we went out there, the URL for a website was already taken. In fact, there's probably about 100 Christie Creation companies out there. So, uh, that was a, a no go. So, then I decided to take uh, my middle name and my daughter's middle name, which is my middle name is Scott. Yes, my parents named me after a judge, a male judge. Mm -hmm. And then um, uh, uh, Amelie uh, was my daughter's middle name, and she was actually named after a princess. Um, uh, and she's an ancestor of mine. She was a, a, a novelist and um, very successful. She, she sold like 120, over 120,000 books in the 18, in 1800s. And, um, wow, she ended up going to a party and she met a Russian prince and they got married. So she's actually from Virginia, the, I can't say it, the Albemarle County area. And, uh, so that's where she was from. And, so, yeah, you know, when my parents said I was the first girl born in five generations, I asked, well, who was the last girl? And they said she was a princess. So it was all over there. You know, I'm part princess. Forget everything else. It just made sense to you, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. I, I, I love her. She's just awesome. But it's really been an evolution, right? I mean, you know, you, you come up with a great technique and then you start selling your embroidery designs, but it's not as easy as it appears, right? No, no, yeah, <laughs> kind right. of a scary thing to sell embroidery designs because you have to have that support. Yes, yes. And, and speaking of the support, you had a lot of support at home. Uh, some of it forced labor from what I understand back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> I should introduce my support team. Uh, he should come over here. He's uh, just real quick. This is Mark. We lovingly call him the geeky guy because he just, he really, um, he, he handles all, whenever my computer is not functioning right, it, he hears, Mark! And I go running. <laughs> so, yes, he's awesome. Thank you. But who's your I, husband? Huh? Hey, that's your husband. Yes, he's my husband. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> but your children used to be involved, right? Yeah, yeah, they used to be involved. Katie used to design some quilts and Sean used to edit our videos. I think I've got one video. I know I have one video out that's had... Oh, I think over a hundred thousand views. It's how to sandwich a large quilt on a small table. And he, um, the story behind that was they were in, I, they had just taken like a video class in school. So I thought, Hey, we'll put out some YouTube videos and we'll do this all summer long. And they said, no, that's a terrible idea. Mom, it's our <laughs> summer vacation. So they were really, really mad at me that day. And, uh, you know, on video camera, you have to kind of move slow. You can't, yeah. you know, do this. And right. so I was yeah. moving too fast. Katie was getting mad at me. She was doing the camera. And then Sean just decided to let me have it. And he did all these snarky little comments. And people just love the snarky comments. So I yeah. left them all in there. <laughs> yeah, they're a lot of fun. They really are, for yeah, sure. They're, they're a hoot. But they yeah. have their own careers now. They're no longer, you know, one is an accountant and one is, um, what is Katie? What is her uh, business, analyst. business analyst? That's awesome. She, that's great. Well, you must be very proud of them for sure. I am. I yeah, am. Yeah, you should. Okay. So what's your favorite color, Christine? Oh, I'd have to say probably blue. That's I like blue too. too. I like the cool colors. Yeah. Because all your book covers are blue. So yeah, because that's because... That's that is because I put a beautiful K faucet purple quilt on a pattern and it didn't sell. And then I changed the quilt on the cover and made it blue and it sold like hotcakes. Oh, <laughs> so that? That's why I stick with blue. It seems yes. to be a lot of people's favorite color. Yes. absolutely. Okay. So do you have a favorite Netflix or Amazon prime or anything that you've binged recently that the two of you have really enjoyed? Yes, Heartland, and uh, it's a it's a show on the Hallmark. We're we're I'm into Hallmark because it's um, everything's just sweet and nothing violent, and it's just a nice 
you know, everybody's in love. I know the, the plot for everything. Two people meet, they fall in love, they get married. But, you know, it's just very romantic. And But Heartland, I love because it's a, a, yeah, it's just a great show. If you have not watched the series, watch it. Okay. And is that on Netflix or Prime? Um, it's on Hulu. Oh, Hulu. There you go. See? All right. Good to know. Okay. So comedians, uh, Betty White or Joan Rivers? Probably neither. I'm not into either one of them. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Do you have a favorite comedian? Oh, who's the guy with the puppets? He was always kind of funny. Oh. Or uh, Je uh, your redneck if Jeff. Um, <laughs> Jeff Foxworthy. <laughs> Jeff Foxworthy, he was okay. always fun. Yeah, yeah, he's a lot of That's fun. That's more my style. Okay, what was the last class you took, not taught, but you took in person? That would be the Tuffet. I took a class to make the Tuffet. You remember those Tuffets that everybody was in little stools, quilted yeah, stools that everybody yeah, was yeah. making? I took okay. that and and I went over that supply list over and over and over. I made sure I was all prepped and everything. I get to class and I didn't realize there was information on the back page. So oh, I was the one student that was not prepared, but I was the first one finished. So, <laughs> Wow. Wow. How about that? Okay. So let's see. So, um, Patsy Downer wants to know, she says uh, she loves Heartland, but what kind of music do you prefer? I like all kinds of music. I am a classical guitarist. Um, I like folk music. I like rock and roll. I like metal. I just, you know, I'm not big into opera um, or musicals, but yeah, I just, I like pretty much all music. And music plays a pretty significant element in your marriage, right? Isn't that how you oh. met? Oh, yeah, yeah. We met, um, Mark and I were in a band together. Well, he actually, I met him on the altar of the church where we were married. He was leading the music worship uh, group there. Mm -hmm. And I went up and started talking to him. And that's how we met. And I thought, wow. And the funny thing was, was I went home that day and I told my mom, I said, I just found the guy I'm going to marry. And she gets, oh everybody God. was laughing at me. And they're like, how do you know? I said, I don't, I just know without a doubt we're going to be together forever. Wow. Yeah. How sweet. Yeah. That's it was cool. like just yeah. Very nice. Nice to hear uh, that. Well, yeah. your your comedian with the puppets uh, with the puppets was Jeff D Dunham. Dunham? Yes. I like him too with the puppets. I like him too. Okay. <laughs> Judy Warren is overly impressed with quilting and classical guitars. Yeah, that's yeah. very cool. Yeah, lots of talent there. Yeah. Really. I have a, have a sad little story with the classical guitar. That's something you have to do every single day for about five, six hours. You have to really practice and yeah. I kind of let it go. So I'm getting back into it and I'm just really disgusted with my playing right now, but I'll get it. I'll get it back. It's coming yeah. back. Well, that's awesome. And, you know, kudos to you for, you know, redeveloping those skills. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Poor Mark, he has to listen to me play the song <laughs> over and over. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Um, if you were going to select a piece of chocolate, will it be dark or milk chocolate? It would be milk chocolate and it would be a turtle. with It would have to have some nuts in it with nuts pecans in it. and okay. caramel. I like yes. that. All right. So... Okay, this is kind of a tell-all question. How many uh -oh. pairs of scissors are in your studio? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Um, I don't know. Every now and then I'll do a video uh, to, uh, and say that they've all reunited. Um, like, right now I got three right here just on my talking desk. I got two over there. Mm -hmm. I got one here. I'm sorry. Scissors. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about. Yes, yes. Yes. Don't garage. mess with me. No. Yeah. <laughs> that's just at the desk. This right. doesn't even have a sewing machine here. I. I that's hysterical. Yeah. Well, now yeah. I feel. I. I. I, I feel you feel better, better now. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's ridiculous. Yeah. It's absolutely yeah. ridiculous. It's worse. It's like shoes. You know. Yeah. For some people, yeah. For sure. You know, I've. I've I've gone to classes before in the past where, you know, people will, you know, you need applique scissors when you do applique. And I've seen, you know, in some classes, people bring the big old Fiskers and like, oh, no, come on, you can't cut with that. Right. Absolutely. You can't do that. Yeah. 
So Ann Philbeck says she can't even count hers. Yeah, well, me neither, for sure. And you know, we're, you're right though. You need the right tool for the right job. You know, recently in April, I, I spent a month up in Norfolk, Virginia, and I cooked dinner every night in my daughter's home. And they're not uh, really cooks. I mean, they do cook, but you know, they're both doctors and they're very busy people. And boy, I kind of was out of my element without my tools, you know, my yeah. my favorite knives, my favorite, whatever they were, those tools. I felt like Absolutely. I was really scrambling. So I know I would be the same way in a sewing room if I didn't have all my favorite things. I mean, it's taken us decades to collect these things, right? Yeah, actually, that's how I got my first uh, embroidery machine. I told my husband, I said, look, I am sewing on a manual typewriter. I need a word processor. Do you get that? He's like, I totally get it. <laughs> yeah, I totally get it. Okay. <laughs> Well, Cindy Garner wants us to pay attention and talk about quilting. So we'll have some more fun questions, but she's right. Okay. So do you, where, where's the starting point for you when you're doing a quilt? It's on the, uh, the, oh, where do I start a design? <laughs> where do I start a quilt? Usually in the, somewhere in the center. And um, I just go straight down the length of the quilt. Up at the top, okay. straight down. So a, a column in the center of the quilt. Yes. And it depends yes. on whether you have odd or even number columns. Yes. So if I have an even number. I put the start point on the center of the quilt. Mm -hmm. If it's an odd number, I put the vertical line that I have everybody draw on their template in the middle. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. And then from there, mm -hmm. you're probably always working on the right half of the quilt, correct? Absolutely. You're going to complete yes. that. Yeah. yeah. And, then, and then you're going to flip the quilt and rotate your embroidery design and complete the other half, right? Absolutely, yep. Yeah. Is that how you do it? <laughs> yeah, and I just have to find this other comment because it was great. Um, okay, Julianne Crookston says, she'll buy scissors over shoes any day. Well, yeah, me too now, <laughs> but there was a time where no, I probably would have bought the shoes. Now, not so much, not so much anymore. Okay, let's see. How many embroidery machines are currently up and running in your studio? Now, I don't mean actually on right now, but if you, I know we can't see what you're looking at, but how many machines are, you know, could, we could throw a, a hoop on and a quilt. We have four on tables ready to go. Okay. And then a few on the floor because uh -huh. I don't have a table for them. Yeah, right. There's not enough room. Or ever. actually five if you count the E16. Uh, that's true. Yeah. So five. Five. Okay. Okay. So Laurie Scott has a question. And this is a great segue, I think, maybe to your slideshow. So Laurie wants to know, what do you do when the design is bigger than the space you have left on the column? Oh, you are just, okay. So you're just going to love our new book. So um, do you want, uh, okay. So we just released a new book that's called Edge to Edge Pro. It builds upon what you've learned in Edge to Edge Quilting. And what I've done is I have created a method where you can create all, put all your Edge to Edge Quilting. I'm sorry, what? Oh, do you, uh, do you, is it okay if we go through the slide? We have like a little slide presentation. Would that be okay, Eileen? Or are we still doing the 20 questions? Uh, bring me up, Sam. Okay, hang on one second. We're just, I'm doing a little sign language here. Okay, uh, Mark, you need to pop that up. Oh, okay. Okay, so mm -hmm. so um, what I've done so is Mark, I've- So just share your screen. Here we go. He's coming in. So Christine, just one second. There we go. All okay. Right. I'm excited about this. I'm so excited okay. about this new book. So what we do, what I've done is I've created an, a method where you can have full size edged edge quilting in the center of your quilt, where it will stop right at a border seam. And then you can do other designs around the border. Um, so let me, um, I have an example of this on this table runner. In the center of the table runner, I have six edge to edge designs. They, the two on the far end, they both stop right at the border seam. And then I've, you know, added border designs around the edge of the quilt. You know, for um, years, for quite a few years, people have been asking me for edge to edge with border designs and that never really made sense to me because edge to edge is one design going all the way across a quilt having borders would be more of a um custom quilting type uh 
quilting. But, you know, I have been noodling on this for about, you know, three, four years. And there were some little issues. One was, you know, figuring out the size that the file needed to be so it would stop at the border. Um, I also found out that um, most machines and software packages change the stitch length uh, when you resize. And then I also had to have some kind of method for the border. So that's the thing. Those are the things that this um, the the book solves. I solve all these problems in the book. So I used to be a fifth grade math teacher, or I used to be a fifth grade teacher. So I created a worksheet to help you go through to fit, ha, go through the steps to figure out um, what exactly how to exactly size what size a quilting file needs to be so it will stop in the borders. And that was kind of tricky because I don't know what size your quilt is. So that worksheet, I figured out a really simple method for that. And then thanks to the people at Dime, Eileen and your crew, we were able to provide the embroidery tool shed inside the book. There's a download inside the book, um, in which you can take the designs into and resize at no cost to you. And by the way, that that embroidery package is a $200 value. It's super, super easy to use. Um, I have a video already out there on how to use it. I've got uh, instructions in the book. And um, then I also provide some, uh, a method for positioning and sizing the border designs. And then on top of all that, you know, you can do this with all your quilts, but um, I wanted you to have some other quilts to, you know, I wanted to give you some projects too. So I've given you 11 projects. Uh, the first one um, is a table runner and it's a 16 patch. It takes you, it will take you about six hours to make this and quilt it. And we call it the trial runner because it's a great one to practice on because it's not, it, the piecing is not as detailed, but then we do have some more uh, detailed piecing projects. We have this poinsettia table runner and you can see that's the bubbly, we call this a bubble set. It's like a little feather bubble design set that, you know, you can use with this table runner or you can use it with any quilt project that you might have. Um, the next one is a uh, maple leaf. Uh, you get the uh, piecing pattern for the maple leaf table runner and the maple leaf set. Then there is a, um, what else is next? Um, oh, the magnolia one. I'm, you know, I'm from Texas. I'm missing those big white magnolia trees. And um, they have a magnolia set for that. There is a uh, busy bee wall hanging. It's also, I've got a separate, a different one behind me on the wall when I talk with the yellow border. And then, um, and then uh, I have a couple big quilts, bigger quilts. This is a chips and queso. I'm a I'm a Texan, so I like to have my peppers. And this has got a cute pepper design that goes with it, a pepper set. And then um, the snowflake uh, or hat mitten time quilt is is really fun. And I'm going to talk about the. Um, there's a the center design has um, hats and mittens and snowflakes and then the border design has mittens and snowflakes but there's one design that's a little different that you can put in the border and that is a hedgehog and he is running off with a set of mittens and i just thought that would be fun to have a different design in there um so you know i don't have grandchildren yet but those of you who have grandchildren or kids it would be fun to have them find who took the mittens you know and and um, so I'll show you some of the, I'll show you the designs in the book too. We've got a little slide for that. So there's the bubbly design, the, the busy bee design, the maple leaf designs. And you can see there's a, the border design and a cornerstone design. And then we have the peppers designs, the jalapeno peppers, the magnolia. And then on the hat and mitten, if you look over to the right hand side, it's a little hedgehog. He's standing up on his rear legs. He's got earmuffs on and his, you know, back is kind of uh, jaggedy and he's got a little scarf and he's got a little mitten in his hand and he's running off with the mitten. Um, and then because you had, um, we really want, you really need to have edge to edge experience before you go pro. Um, we took some of the designs, five of the designs from the first book, and we converted them to C2S files. And I'll talk about that in a minute. And we gave you uh, border designs and corner designs so you can use all those designs as well. There's the maple leaf, the holly, the fall, fall leaves, the spring meander, and then the star design. 
Awesome. And um, so you know, we had a, we had, they just want to know what's the name of the book again. It's Edge to Edge Pro. And they can get that over at Amelia Scott Designs, right? We don't, we don't actually have it on our site yet. We have, um, we're, we're letting the stores uh, have an opportunity to sell it first. So you'll have to get it from your uh, local quilt shop. Uh, but it, it, they, are, they are now available through all the shops. Okay, that's great. That's really and awesome. la later on we'll we'll put it on our site, but we're gonna wait a couple weeks before we do that. Right, and, that's very um, generous of you, Christine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and so, I do want to say one more thing. Um, we give you the C two S files, and the reason why we give you the C two S files is that is the native digitizing format for all of dime softwares so you can take the c2s file into embroidery tool shed the free program that uh, dime is giving you and you can resize it to any size you want and, and maintain beautiful stitches so yes. that's why we've done that Right. And so this Donna Abbott's way had wanted to know, can she use software that she already owns to resize? Well, what Christine is explaining is if you just download Dimes free sizing software, it's free. So you don't have to purchase it. That's called Embroidery Tool Shed. You can open her designs from her new book, her new book here, and then you can resize all of the designs in this book when you select the C2S format, which is the native format of all dime software. And yeah, so we the, have a, Eileen, I just want to say the book only has the C2S file format. Oh, okay. Well, thank you, know, you. We don't I give know. any PS or PES okay. or anything. You have to take it into Toolshed to put okay. it in your format. Well, thank you. I mean, I didn't even know that. That's awesome. And remember, that's free. It's a free download. You don't have to purchase anything. And you're really going to like that software. It's super easy to use. I have a yeah, video. Yeah. I've got a, I just finished a worksheet on how to just bring the file in and save it to your yeah. format. So we've, we've got you covered. That's great. That's really great. So Barbara, oh, oh. Oh. yeah. So I'm, yeah. I'm just looking at that. The file She's format. Yeah, you can save the file format into the different quilting formats too. So there's a, I'll let you take that. I know there's a QLI and the handy oh, quilt. Yeah. Everybody, all, all long, arm for, long arm formats are available in the save as feature in Embroidery Toolshed. So you'll just open Christine's design and then you'll go to file save as. And from that drop down menu, you'll select the format for your long arm or your embroidery right. machine. So yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah. And let's see. Uh, so Beth is asking where are the videos and the worksheet. So when you purchase the book, the links are included in the book. They're in, you know, like page two and also in the back of the book. That's where you're going to find all of the links. You have to purchase the book in order to participate in using those, you know, they're digital products, but it takes a long time to develop them, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, it does. Yeah. Okay, so let's see. TJ Tech says embroidery tool should is so cool. She can't believe that you can everything you can do on it is free software and it does run on a Mac. So for those of you who are Mac, you can definitely do it. So yeah, of course, Kay, we definitely save in single needle formats also. So PES, EXP, DST, VP3, oh, yeah. VP4. You, you know, tell me what format you want to save it in, Kay, in your comments, and I'll let you know whether we do that or not. Let's see. And where do we find a shop that carry it? If your local quilt shop doesn't carry it, well, it will be available on Christine's website in a couple of weeks. So just yeah, you can always it. contact uh, Mark at support at AmeliaScott.com yeah. and I'm sure you can work something out for you. Right, for sure. And let's see, where do we find the free software on Dime's website? So we'll run a ticker uh, or someone in the comments, one of my team members will put that up there, a link to the software that you can download. And uh, so Cheryl, I think we've answered your question. You know, you need to use Embroidery Toolshed to resize these designs. The Floriani software will not read that format. Right. Just like any other software program will not read it. So, okay. What else? Let's see. Do you have a go-to hoop size? You know, I've really been liking my eight by 12 hoop. I've just yeah. been, it seems like I've been using it a whole lot lately. It's a friendly hoop, right? Yeah, I really like that yeah. size. Yeah. My go-to is the nine and a half by 14. 
because it's you know a little bigger than that eight, right? So I can use an eight inch wide design mm -hmm. and yet have some wiggle room. I mean, I have the 10 and a half by 16 on that we were showing earlier and it is a great hoop, um, uh -huh. but you know, it's big. It's kind yes. of unwieldy, right? You know, uh, so, sometimes, so, yeah. Yeah, you and I do this all the time. Like you know, some days you're just hooping and hooping and hooping, <laughs> so, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. So 10 by 16 gets yes. the um, um, Beth and I make all our samples and oh my gosh, mm -hmm. I've got bins and bins and bins of samples. I know, let us know what to do with them. <laughs> yes, <laughs> please. Uh, yeah, let's see. Okay, um, so when you make an embroidery mistake, this probably isn't really appropriate for you because I, I think I know, but anyway, do you throw it out or do you rip out the stitches? It depends on how much invested. I'll tell you that hat and mitten uh, quilt, I was quilting it and I did the entire first column. And then I realized I started in the wrong place. So I ripped the whole first column out because wow. I didn't want to make the quilt again. Right. So, yeah. But, but if it's just, if I'm doing like a, you know, like a block and I mess it up, I would probably right. just toss it and start over. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I kind of figured you'd say that, you know, it's hard to throw away a whole quilt. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Oh yeah. No. Yeah. Right. Okay. Do you have a favorite movie? Um, I like my cousin Vinny. That's a good one. And I like snow day when, when oh. it used to snow up here, I, that used to be my go-to video. I made the kids and me, we'd all have to watch snow day because anything can happen on a snow day. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So Melanie Campbell wants to know, do you need experience with edge to edge or can you start with the edge to edge pro book? No, get some experience um, under edge to edge first before you right. go to, because I don't tell you how to do edge to edge in the book. I'm assuming you know how to do that. Yeah. So this would be the book that, that, that would they would purchase. So that's the original edge to edge quilting on your embroidery machine. Yeah. And yeah, that's we followed up by continuous quilting, which is a little different, but this is the one that you probably want. Right? Yeah. The, and we have the second edition out now too. So you oh, yeah. probably want second I'm edition. Sorry. Yeah, that's in my office. I should have brought it in. Okay, so do you have a favorite fabric designer? Oh, um, that's hard. I just, I, I just, you know, I, I love it all. I, you I know, know. I love it all too. Yeah, yeah, I love it all. I love it. Yeah, I just. And I change. Me, I do too. I, I like. I used to love Kay Fawcett. I used to love Amy Butler, but yeah. I. What I'm doing now, I have to. I'm, I'm liking Riley Blake a lot because I need all those small prints so the quilting shows up. And right, that's right. That's exactly my same feeling. Um, let's see. So, Patsy Downer wants to know: Do you use stabilizer when quilting? Um, no, because I have enough stabilizer. I've got batting and I've got backing fabric, and if that isn't enough stabilization for that quilt, then I don't know what is. Because <laughs> we're quilting. No. Right? Yeah, you're yeah. quilting three layers. You don't need any stabilizer. Excuse me. Bless you. Sorry. Don't you go getting sick again? No, I'm not <laughs> sick. I'm not sick. Excuse me. Um, but you know, we're quilting. Edge to edge is truly quilting. So they are just running stitches. There's no complex fills. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. no satin stitches. So there's no dense embroidery. It is just running stitches exactly like a long armor. So if exactly. a long armor wouldn't use stabilizer, then you won't use stabilizer either. That's a good way of putting it. I yeah. Like it. Yeah. You're welcome. Okay, so Patricia Roberts wants to know, is there a difference between edge to edge one and edge to edge two? Um, edge to edge one tells you the ba it gives you the, uh, you mean between first edition and second edition? Yeah. Um, well, we, in, you know, when we put the book out in 2014, you know, there were so much has changed since yeah. then, like hoop sizes have changed the magnetic hoops, uh, you know, the, uh, monster hoops have come into play. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to add that new information into the book. The method is still the same in both books, but we did want that additional information in there. Good, good. Okay. So let's see. Um, so Denise Bell wants to know, are the files available for download or included on a USB drive? So again, there's links in the book of where you will go and download these designs. 
And mm -hmm. you can save them to a USB or to your hard drive or directly to your machine in the format for your machine. So there is no digital media that's included with the book. Correct. Um, you know, because most machines today don't come with CD drives and USBs. Mm -hmm. Well, USB 2, 3, I'm sure that'll go by the wayside before we know it, right? Well, and USBs are not that reliable either. I mean, I don't know about you, but I go through at least two a year where they just go oh, sure. south on me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I would, sure. I, I would never store anything on a USB. That's right. So let's see, Retha Ranke wants to know, can you start with book two? And you sure can, right? Uh, I would start. Oh, with the second edition or yeah, yeah, the you could oh, definitely yeah. the second edition edge to edge book. This one is second the, edition, yes. Yeah. Is the original even available anymore? Um, we're try. I, you know, I, I, um, I don't have it available. I'm I'm not shipping it out. We haven't shipped it out in probably six months. So, if somebody did get a first edition book, it would probably have been you know, in that store for a while. For a while, I see. And so, which probably means no, because yeah. they, her books fly out of those stores. And so, yeah. Melanie Campbell, this book is available now at your local quilt shop or sewing machine retailer. It is. It is. It, yeah. And it will be available on Christine's website in a couple weeks. Yes. Um, let's see. Um, so, Melanie Campbell wants to know, are these running stitch or are they triple stitch? So, they're all just regular running stitch, single line running stitches, correct? Absolutely. Yes. Not, yeah. Quilters don't like triple stitches and I'm a no. quilter. Yeah, they don't. I learned that my first collection was, had both versions. So well, somebody wanted me to hold up the book. And then Mertis Trexler wants to know what is expansion pack two and three? They're just new designs, right? Oh, we have actually 16 regular expansion packs now. And you're exactly right. They're just additional designs. We didn't want to sell you the book and 10 new designs each time. So we just have additional designs. Um, and we also have jumbo packs, one, two, and three. Uh, those uh, include uh, the same large file for the, the, let me back up. The expansion packs one through 16 come in small, medium, and large sizes. And uh, the jumbo, the, we continued the large into the jumbo size packs, the, the large size into the jumbo packs. But then we included, and like I said, things are just changing all the time. We included an oversize for the, uh, uh, the Foff Icon, the Bernina Jumbo, and the uh, Viking Epic too. And then uh, we have extreme sizes for the uh, Luminaire and for the Solaris. Okay, awesome. Uh, so, so <laughs> yeah, TJ Texas that she has a 200, 260 by 400 hoop, but you recommend not to make edge to edge designs as large as so you can, you know, um, as you can make it, you, that you often suggest fine tune placement adjustments. And that would be for your original files that are in machine formats, correct? Correct, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and the reason why you don't want to fill a design all the way to the edges of the hoop is you have no room to connect. You have no, you know, room for for placement, you know, positioning. Right. Yeah. Always leave yourself a little wiggle yeah. room. It's oh, very yeah. tempting to say, oh, you know, I, I'm going to use a design that's 259 inches. I mean, 259 millimeters in a 260 hoop. Don't do it. It's just not worth it. Yeah. It's so frustrating. Keeping it a little smaller, it just makes your life so much yeah. easier because you can just use your positioning. You know, if you have to hoop another column, it will save you more time than if you were trying to nail placement in every hooping. And, you know, some hoops, probably 50 hoopings, you know, right? Easy. Uh, yeah. And that's just like a full-size quilt. So yeah. you have to get comfortable. Um, with quilting. Yeah, I but mean, with know, hooping, right? Arlene, I have a little video for how I slide the hoop around. You so I don't do. know. Let's watch you, it. Let's yeah. Watch. Okay. The, you okay. guys are going to. All right. I'm going to show you how I do what I call the Amelie Scott slide. This keeps me from getting up and down. I just stay at my machine and I quilt. So what I do is I, first of all, I lift up the bottom portion of the hoop and I put my hand underneath it. It doesn't hurt because there's all these layers. And then I kind of hold the fabric in place while I slide the top portion of the hoop forward. 
as I'm sliding it down, I go probably to about an inch, inch and a half, where the design is still seen inside the hoop. So this is about, oh, probably an inch and a half, maybe two inches of my design. You will see that the, the hoop just kind of stays on top of the magnetic portion because this is the end of the hoop. So the next thing I do is I grab the fabric on the sides and I just pull the fabric straight back. And while I'm doing this, I'm also trying to keep my quilt a little straight. This is on the seven back here, so I'm kind of trying to keep that on a seven, that seam. And you can hear it when it clicks into place, the, it, because it's, the magnet kind of snaps into place. And then before I move any forward, I set, I make sure the hoop is set in all four areas. We don't want to, you know, run over the hoop. And here that, what that did was help me eliminate um, repositioning the fabric so much. I, I just have a little bit of pulling and tugging, not much. I check a few seams. This one here is on the one. That one over there is on the one. So I'm ready to go really right now. So again, the way, I, the way I say it is you slide the top hoop forward, pull the fabric back, make sure the hoop is set, and you're quilting just like that. I sing the silly rhyme, or I say the silly rhyme, so it sticks inside your mind, the Amelia Scott Snap Hoop Slide. Woo! That's awesome. I love that. <laughs> but I'll tell you. I'll tell you, I just, I mean, I just cruise down those columns doing that. Just doop, 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 doop. Yeah. I mean, you know. Right. That's all. It's you know. easier than lifting it and, you know, storing it over the head of the machine. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. Let us know in the comments if you like that. Her slide. That's really awesome. We're so, all going to have to embrace that. It used to take me about eight hours to do a twin size quilt and I can, it cut my time in half. Oh, wow. Doing that, yeah. yeah. But half, it cut it in half. I mean, I'm always like, the quilting used to be the long part of the project. Now the quilting's the short part. I'm like, wow, yeah. I'm done already. Whoa. I, yeah, it is really. I Absolutely. It's so fast. I mean, these designs stitch in three minutes, most of them. I know. I know. Right? So if you can just slide that hoop, pull the fabric back yeah. and Right. ready to go it takes longer to rehoop than it does to stitch the actual design and you don't yes. change color threads normally no. even edge to edge you don't yeah no yeah it's awesome yeah they love it uh-huh what do you do at the end of the column from catching the end with the foot ah pray no i'm not kidding <laughs> Well, prayer, oh, prayer, oh, prayer. one of the thing, one of the things you can do is flip the edge of the fabric over a bit, lay down some paper towels, and just spray baste it. Really, you know, yeah, spray baste yeah. it and then flatten it back right. out. Uh, you know, that's definitely not the time to get up and go do laundry, though. You right. Know? Right. And actually, that's what I do. I stay yeah. at the machine because you know when it's going to what design is going to be encroaching on the edge of the fabric. So yeah. I stay with the machine and I literally stop it when it's getting right to the edge. And I just advance through the stitches until it's yeah. back on the fabric. And then I go get a cup of tea. Yeah. And make sure the needle is like back on the fabric. Then you don't have to worry about yeah, it. Yeah. Then yep. you don't have to worry do that about that too. It. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so let's see, so many fun comments. Uh, oh, we did have one co comment. You know, you talked about edge to edge and uh, edition one and edition two. Is it the same cover? How would someone know the difference between the two covers? The, um, if you can see, there's a little gold star that says second edition. Okay, right. And so I, my copy does not have the second yeah, edition. Mine, so, right. uh, so that's yeah. the difference, folks. Yeah. Still same beautiful model on the cover. Yeah. <laughs> Just missing the gold star, right? Yeah. You get Yeah. That's great. Uh, let's see. Um Sharon Willis Jones says, Great. She stopped quilting to learn this. Thank you hundreds of times over. Isn't that so? Oh, nice? you're so welcome, Sharon. Yeah. That's so waiting you to stop quilting to for this podcast. I guess it's called right. a podcast. Okay. And so TJ Tech wants to know, do you offer online classes? We do. We have a um a 
uh, Academy Core class. That's our Edge to Edge Core class. You can sign up for how would they? What you would do is go to your machine, uh, to your local quilt store, get them to pick you up a workbook, and then so this is what the workbook looks like, and then you can come into any one of our edge to edge classes we're going to be in the uk next next week we have three days uh in the uk with a group of ladies in the uk so that's our next class coming up and you just yeah go out to our website and you know sign up for a class out there register that's, awesome. that's great so margaret moody wants to know can you use this process for a queen size quilt on a domestic machine you sure can so Look, we're going to switch the camera over to the quilt that, and the machine, just so you can see. That most certainly is not a queen size quilt, but that quilt is 54 inches wide by 70 inches in length. I have done a queen size quilt. I've actually done a king size quilt on um, a baby lock Solaris and a large hoop. The key is uh, controlling the weight of the quilt. And that's what that device that you see, the clamps holding the quilt, that's the weightless quilter. And, you know, we're not really going to go into the weightless quilter today, but it's a floor frame. So it's sitting on the floor underneath my machine table and it has flex poles and it is literally moving with the quilt. So there's no excess drag on the hoop, on the machine pantograph. All the machine is only focusing on the sewing field and truly that's what it was designed to do. So if you're going to tackle a queen size quilt, you must elevate that quilt above the machine bed or you'll have very, a very frustrating experience for sure. Yeah. So. And Eileen, I just want to say something about your weightless quilter. You are a genius. You think so much like me. Because when I was setting mine up, when I first got and I was setting it up, Mark said, oh, I'll go get a screwdriver. He came back and I said... I didn't need a screwdriver. The screws are as big as door knob, you know, yeah. doorknobs in your kitchen, the kitchen doorknobs. I said, this was brilliant. And then the poles, there's no getting down your knees to screw anything right. in. You just switch the, I mean, I just love it. It's very fast, easy to use. Absolutely. Um, April Story wants to know, can you get extra flex poles? You can get extra flex poles. Just contact our customer service. Not real sure why you would need them, April, but because uh, you get eight in the weightless quilter. You get four that have a, a thicker diameter that are more rigid and four that are have a skinnier diameter, diameter, smaller diameter, so they're more flexible. Frankly, I always use the skinny ones. I very rarely use the l thicker poles. Um, and when I, I, I did use them on a king size quilt and that was the only time. Okay, so Christine, do you have a favorite card game that maybe you and Mark play to pass time? Um, we don't necessarily play cards, but we, I do have favorite board games and one is called Dice Forge. Um, my, let me, let me just tell you why I have these kind of weird games that we play. My son is a really, he's, um, almost 30. He's really big into all these, uh, um, He's an avid gamer. And there became a point where I didn't understand what he was saying to me. He was talking about beholders and rogues and all this stuff. And I'm like, I don't know what comes out of your mouth. <laughs> so I started playing Dungeons and Dragons with him and a couple of his friends about, what, five years ago? So I could learn his vocabulary. So now he's like, he always brings these interesting games over. But my favorite is Dice Forge. That's it, awesome. That's awesome. Not many moms go into their world, right? We expect. Yeah, them to go I kind of had world. to. I, yeah, I kind of had to. But now he's come into my world. He's into cooking, so I like to cook. And, oh, uh, nice. Yeah. yeah so that's nice too. So that's awesome. So Sharon Aiden is doing. She's done two size king quilts with a Bernina seven fifty, and since then she's purchased the weightless quilter, and she's just finished another queen size king size quilt. All oh, right. Cool. He's wow. ambitious. Okay, I know Mark's in the room, but I always ask our female guest when we do 20 questions. Um, if you could have a dinner invitation with one of two gentlemen, would, which would you select? George Clooney or Matthew McConaughey? Matthew, definitely. Okay. All right. <laughs> and I know the answer to this, but maybe our viewers don't. Do you prefer cats or dogs? Dogs. Doggos. Dogs. Yeah. Big dogs. Yeah. Our, uh, Lex, 
we have an 86 pound, she's a little overweight, but an 86 pound, uh, five year old German shepherd who is, oh gosh, I just taught her how to, we, we're trying to do, if you've ever watched, there's a video out there called bunny. There's a, a doodle that hits all these buttons and tells the owners what he, oh, yes. uh, bunny wants to do. So mm -hmm. we, we started off with the, uh, every night at eight o'clock, we give uh, Lexi a Kong treat. So we call it, you know, we say, Lexi, what time is it? And she runs over and hits a button and the button says eight o'clock, you know, and we give her eight o'clock treat. Well, we recently taught her outside. Shoot me now. <laughs> Yesterday it was, she hit that button like every 20 minutes outside. I'm like, I just took you outside, outside, outside. So now I know what goes on in my dog's brain. All she wants to do is eat and go outside. Besides, there you go. Oh, there's nothing else in her brain. Right. And now you can't have her unlearn that, right? No, I can't. I, I can hide the button, you know. I when we actually did that, she just threw a big ball down the stairs. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, my friend uh Retha Ranke says uh she would prefer Sam Sam Elliott or Tom Selleck. Yeah. And then she said, or both. And Barbara Farrow said Kevin Costner would do. These ladies yeah. have really good taste, right? Yeah, I like those rough, rugged men, you know. Yeah, like, there you go. Yeah. Right. Okay. So Rita Ranke said that she uh, recently, and she's mentioned this before, she comes often to uh, Between Friends, that uh, her adult son has started sewing with her. Oh, that's neat. My son would never do that, but that's really neat. <laughs> right. I'm trying, yeah, I'm still trying cool. to get Mark to do a little quilting. It's like, yeah. no. Okay, he says, so I'll Go he ahead. says, I'll do it if you really need the help, but I don't want to do it. I like it. Right. Well, you know, yeah, maybe best we all stay in our areas of expertise. You need yeah. him. You don't want him to fall in love with quilting and then you can't oh, get him to true. do the practice work, right? Yeah, exactly. Then yeah. he'll say, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going to do that. <laughs> yes. So let's see. Kathleen Kelly says, how do you turn the design when you start on the left side upside down? So on your machine, right? Go ahead, Christine. Um, I, I don't turn a design. I turn the quilt and I, because, um, you know, the designs are kind of tossed anyway. So, um, so you don't rotate your design? No, uh, -uh. Okay. because I'm using the A file and a B file, A file, oh. B file. I turn the quilt and I always start with the A because all of you okay. guys are A students. Okay, so that would that answer applies to Christine's designs and her method, but many uh -huh. other designs would ask you to uh, select your embroidery design, stitch the ha right half of the quilt, rotate the quilt, and in your machine editing feature, you rotate the design 180 degrees. That is not mirror imaging, that is rotating 180. So now just the orientation, you know, it's like, M for Mary and not Wilma, right? So, you know, you always want the M to be like this and not the W for Wilma. So, okay. So, yeah. let's see. so our A column is like straight up. Our A design is straight up and our B has already been rotated because uh, the start point is on the left. And when you rotate it, it, turn, it puts it over on the right. So I rotated it for you. That's why right. you have the B design. I see. Yeah, so it sounds complicated when we're just chatting not, here, but I really, know, it's, it's, it's so laid out in, in all of her books, so don't worry about it. Yeah, and Christine Sw Swanson says that uh, any embroidery tool shed lets you rotate your design. So even if you can't do that at your machine, you most certainly can do it in an embroidery tool shed and then just resave that design. Now, here's a tip. What I do when um, I have to do something like that, I change the color of the thread. So let's say my quilting design is black as many of them are. So they're highly visible on the machine screen. Mm -hmm. When I have to rotate it in software, I change the color to red, something that's also highly visible, but different than its original version. And that just tells me right away, something's different here. Yeah, that's a good idea because it's real easy to, like I know when with edge to edge, it's real easy to just get so carried away with the first A, design, a column yeah. that you oh. just continue with the A column and, yeah. And now you have all A's. It's not yeah. horrible. It's sometimes, not horrible. It doesn't, sometimes it doesn't matter, you know, if it's right. a very, you know, flowy design. Exactly. It's just when you have, you know, an item in there like a baby bottle and that baby bottle starts marching across your quilt. Across you don't want that. Quilt. You want yeah. kind of 
but we also have to know we are our own worst critics. You know, if this is the baby quilt that you are giving to a new mom who doesn't quilt or embroider, she is just going to be over the moon with your gift and not know that you made a mistake on hoop number 23 and those <laughs> two designs are not connected. You know, there's a space of a quarter inch. So just get over it, right? Just carry yeah. on and finish the job. Yeah. Don't, don't sweat yeah. it. It's, that's the yeah. small stuff. Okay, so one last thing. Do you have a superhuman ability? Or if you could have a superhuman ability, what would that be? Oh, um, oh, Mark, Mark's pointing to my nose. Yes, I have an amazing sense of smell. It's, oh. it's like I can smell things. Yeah, I just... Yeah, I know uh, one time when Sean was living at home and uh, he, he, he kind of stayed here after while he was in college and then um, a, a year or so after college and he had one of his friends down here and it was so cute because he, he just, my son Sean doesn't drink. He he's just not that's just not his thing. But he came running up to me. He says, Mom, my friend had a beer and it's in the trash can. And I know as soon as you walk in the basement, you're going to smell beer. <laughs> I just wanted to let you know it wasn't me, you know, and I'm like, well, you can have a, you know, I, this was before he was 21 or yeah, I don't know. It was something like that. And I'm like, yeah, basement, I probably, right? yeah, I probably would smell it in a closed trash can in the basement. Right, like, right, right. I smell a beer. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe you could have worked for a perfume company, right? People who develop perfumes, you know, they have uh, really sophisticated no smell. The sense of I, I don't know if I'd be able to, I get overwhelmed. Like if I, I mean, if they, if I did something like that, it'd have mm. to be one cent and then take it away. Because mm. like, if I walk into a potpourri yeah. or like, I hate going into candle shops and stuff like that. Cause oh, I smell everything yeah. all at once. Right. You know, my friend, Nancy Zeman, she used to sneeze down the whole length of the laundry detergent aisle in the grocery store because oh. just that, you know, it's yeah. so fragrant there. And she would just sneeze the whole way. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> little little yeah. thing do we know. Okay, so let's see. Mary Larson, I love this. We were talking about your quilts. Forgiving yourself if there's a space. She says, so true. Nobody has given uh, any of her quilts back to her. So, yeah. <laughs> That's let's true. See. Okay. Uh, how do you baste your quilt? Do you pin baste? Do you do it by sewing? Do you spray? What do you do? If it's small, like 36, you know, if it's a small, like this wall hanging behind me, I would definitely spray baste. If it's a large quilt, I pin baste. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, okay, uh, see. and with embroidery, you don't need a lot of pins. Sometimes I've gone into classes oh, yeah. where somebody oh, yeah. will put a safety pin every inch, you know, basically right. spread your hand, right. You know, go around. And you know, hand. if you, when you use a snap hoop monster, you know, you're getting added tension on that fabric. So you're going to remove those pins as you advance the quilt and smooth out that quilt sandwich with each hooping. And I've ne I, there is, I've never had ripples on the back, puckers, any of that. You know, it's just a process and it comes, becomes very intuitive. If you overpin, yeah. it's just kind of more work for you. You're taking out a lot of pins, you're re-smoothing and so forth. Yeah. And they shrink. I mean, quilt, right? That's what we're doing. We're shrinking up the quilt, the quilt sandwich as we quilt, no matter if you're on a long arm or if you're on an embroidery machine. So know that, you know, yeah. when you're overpinning, you're just going to be fighting that. So it's all good. It's all good, right? Okay, so I do have, um, uh, I, well, do you have any other questions for Christine? Because I think we're about done. This has been an hour and 20 minutes, and I know she has tomato plants that so she has to go water, don't you? <laughs> well, we had rain today, so. Yo, yeah, we did. We had a lot of rain last night. Yeah, uh, a lot of rain. But, oh, man, it was so good to have you here, Christine. It was good to be here. This was fun. It was fun. I, I do Thank like you. your 20 questions. It's really interesting. Yeah, it's super fun. You know, often whenever we're online, all we do is talk about embroidery and quilting. But, you know, just like our viewers, we're, we're human, too. We have families. We have history. We have pet peeves, all that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. 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 So it's fun to share. So let's see. Um, you know, we've had several people ask this. So how do you avoid the locking stitches? So some machines allow you to turn off trimmers. That will help in avoiding excess knots. 
you have uh -huh. any other tips, Christine? On, on the baby lock, I turn off the jump trim stitch okay. that reduces the size of the knot. And on the Bernina, we turn off the fur, the secure stitches. The we secure don't stitch. Because okay. all my designs have knots in the beginning and the end anyway. Yeah. Okay. And Dory Hobson, our good friend down in Naples, Florida, she wants to know where you live. You're in Ohio, right? I'm in, yes. I'm right outside Columbus, Ohio, Dublin, in the Dublin area. Um, but I'm, um, I live most of my life in Houston, Texas, so. And how long that's, have you been in Ohio? Where that's yeah. where the train comes from. Right. Um, 17 years. Can you believe oh, that? Goodness. I lived that's 17 good. years here, two years in North Carolina, which was just beautiful. I'm, I'm a really like a plant tree type person. Yeah. And they have beautiful trees everywhere. And mm -hmm. um, so lush. Yeah. Oh, and here's Marianne uh, Duplaga. She's in Medina. That's right around, not too far, right? Medina so or Medina? Oh, I don't know. I'm not from Ohio. <laughs> I think I always want to say Medina and it's Medina. I don't know. I always get that one wrong. Uh -huh. Okay, then, Ann Philbeck, do you have a YouTube channel or Facebook page? Absolutely. Tell us where they can reach out to you. Yeah, if you go to if you go to YouTube and just do a search of Maylie Scott, I'll come up. I have a little red shirt on. I think it's a little red and white shirt on, and that's my page. We have 150 YouTube videos. We try to put out a lot of video content to help people. Um, and then Facebook, uh, Maylie Scott Designs. I, I post... A, you know, I try to post here and there when it's pertinent, but um, I'm not a big Facebook person or a big uh, posting person on Facebook. Right. Couldn't get done what you get do if you were doing well, Mark is trying to interject something. Nice okay. Oh, somebody asked if there are going to be more packs for the new techniques. Absolutely. I've already got Pro Pack 1 and Pro Pack 2 on my desktop. Awesome. That's so and I'm going to release it right, right away, but they, they, they will be coming. Good. Good. Okay. Well, you know, every week here at Dime on Between Friends, we give away a free design. And uh, first, we kind of review what we've seen out on the web. We ask people to use the designs and then post them on social media and tag them with on the house or dime sew along. And here last week, um, I showed the photo of this really cute cosmetic bag, but I attributed it to someone else. But this bag was actually made by Diana Mullins Atkinson, one of our prolific educators here at Dime. And Susan Timchak, she did Sunny Girl. How cute is she on a tote bag? Really cute. That free design was available a couple weeks ago. And Candy Bray is keeping up with all of the on the house. So, you know, a new design comes out every week. And Candy Bray is caught up to date. She's making a quilt featuring all of the on the house designs. I'm so impressed with that candy. I just can't wait to see how it finishes. And here's her version of Sunny Girl. Now, if you remember, Sunny Girl is available in two sizes. Uh, on the left is the four by four. It doesn't come with the quilting, just the embroidery design that you see there. Candy added the quilting of her own. And uh, so the small four by four is the face and sunglasses and the larger design is for the five by seven. Last week, those of you who downloaded the Firecracker uh, project found out that the cut files were not included, and I apologize for that. They are now included in the download, and if you had previously downloaded it, you should have received an email from Dime with those cut files. And if you didn't, then please feel free to just go back to the DZGNS and download Firecracker project again. So I apologize for that. This week's free design is in celebration of the upcoming Father's Day. So this is a fun applique design. Um, and it's dad, right? Wouldn't that look great on a hat or a shirt for your dad or uh, a, a gentleman in your life who is a father? It only takes two colors because it's applique. That red that you see there is a fabric. And of course, the gold and the black make up the negative space and the outline of the applique. So we hope that you'll take advantage of that. We wanna see a lot of dads sporting super dad logos, right? Isn't that fun, Christine? Absolutely. Yeah. Super yeah. dad. Super dad, super dad for, sure. for sure. They all they are. They all are. 
Okay, and then next week, same time, one o'clock central time, I'm going to have uh, my guest, Salima Jaffer. She was here with me last year. We did dueling dream panels, if you remember. We're working on our topic now, so I won't reveal that till early next week, but you can meet uh, Salima again. She's a baby lock IQ designer extraordinaire, and she is also a baby lock retailer out in California. So we're going to have a lot of fun broadcasting together next week. So Christine, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for everything you do for um, the industry, really, that you have just created this huge wave of interest in finishing quilts on an embroidery machine. And it's so fun to partner with you in the many different ways that we do and really fun, you know, catching up with you today. Well, thank you. And thank you for all your inventions. They, they really make what I do a lot easier. So I, I really, really value all the things you create over there. Thanks, Christine. We're, we've got a good thing going here, you and I, right? We do, we do. Yeah. And thank you, Mark. Oh, I have to give Mark a round of applause because he makes everything look so good. <laughs> right? He loved that. He loved that. He's like, hey. all right. Okay, everyone. Thanks so Thank much. You. See you next week. Bye bye.